Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to implement the vaulting slash ledge getup slash climbing movement into Unity, which is very popular in many games. The one that looks like this. It's honestly pretty simple, so let's get into it. First, we are going to be using a vault layer, which we will attach to a game object to overlay on areas we want to vault or climb up on. So create a new layer, and then create a box and assign it to the vault layer. Then position it where we want, and then we can disable the mesh renderer and also make it a trigger so we don't collide with it. Next, create a script. I'll just call it vaulting. By the way, the code is on GitHub if you want to copy paste, but I recommend watching this video as some values may not work for you. At the start, define a few variables. Integer for our vault layer, a reference to our camera, and the player height and player radius. If you're using a capsule for your player, then you can find that information here, but it may be incorrect if you have messed with the scale. Next, we have to define the vault layer. So we do this name to layer function, and because we're going to be using raycasts, raycasts don't interact with specific layers, they ignore specific layers. So we want to raycast to ignore everything except the vault layer. So we do vault layer equals tilde vault layer, which basically means every layer except the vault layer. So create a function called vault. And what this function does is it basically finds the position we want to move our player to. But first we check if the spacebar is pressed, because I only want to vault if I press space. So the first raycast spawns a ray at the camera location, in the direction we are looking. It stores our hit information in a variable called first hit, it has a range of 1, and only interacts with the vault layer. Pretty simple. Here it is visualized. The second raycast spawns a ray from the first hit point, plus forward by an amount which is our radius, and up by an amount 0.6 times the player height. Now I chose 0.6 because I didn't want the player to be able to vault onto objects which are too high, change this amount to change how high the player can vault. Then we want to shoot the ray down, a distance equal to our player height, and store the hit information in another variable called second hit. It can be pretty hard to visualize what's going on here, so here is another fantastic visualization. First we take our first hit point, move it forward by the player radius, then we move it up equal to 0.6 times the player height. We take this point, this is our starting point, and shoot a raycast down equal to our player height. We then store this point, and that is the point we'll be moving our player to. If you have your pivot point on your player in the middle of its body, you're going to want to take this point and add half the player's height to it in the upward direction. For me, my pivot point is at my feet, so it works for me. With this point, you could now pass it into a move function you have, or whatever you want to do with it, but the way I'm going to move the player is simply by lerping it, so it will work for both character controller and rigid body controllers. And you could do it completely outside of your movement function, because that I'm assuming most people have different ones. Define a coroutine which takes the arguments of our target position and a float for duration. The float will be how fast we want the player to move when we're vaulting. We define a float for time and also our current transform.position of our player. Then we use a while loop to move the player from its starting position to the target position. Lastly, we call this coroutine to start in the vault function after the second raycast check, and then call the vault function in the update function. And that's basically it. You can also trigger an arms animation to play when you start the coroutine, or you can move your camera around, but that's all specific to your project. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Anyway, if this tutorial helped you, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials. The next one I'm going to make is an easy way to implement arms into an FPS game without having to fiddle around with tons of animations. And as, and as I said previously, all the code is on GitHub, so go check that out.